coming up on Fresh View with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Talk about the greatness and the goodness of God. Talk about the incomparable power of God. Talk about those things. And as you do that, imagine this. He gets bigger and bigger in your situation. It's not like you are actually physically making God bigger. God is who he is. He's big. But in your perspective, with respect to your problem, God becomes big. And that problem minimizes to the point where it disappears completely. Hello, I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene, and thank you for tuning in to watch Fresh Dew today. Fresh Dew has a growing circle of partners, and in this time, I want to invite you to be part of our circle of partnership. I'd like to read this portion of scripture. 1 Corinthians 3, from verse 6 to 9 says, I planted, Paul speaking, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are all God's, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, you are God's building. I love the scripture because it shows really for me the circle of partnership and it shows different roles it shows Paul planting Apollos watering but you know many times when we think about partnership we only think of the one who plants and the one who waters well there's a third person in that circle which I want to bring out today a third person and that's God since God brings the increase so think of the circle not just as two sets of people holding hands but there's a third set another person there God and every single one has the role they play. That's basically what Paul was saying. I have my role, you have my role, and God has his role. Now, if we read that from the New Living Translation, it shows this. It says, I planted the seed in your hearts. Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. And that's the beauty of partnership. We all work together with the same purpose of getting the word of God through fresh to you out to everyone. He says, and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers and you are God's field, you are God's building. So really between the one planting let's say us on Fresh Dew, and the ones watering, our partners, no one is more important. But the most important person is God. And that's the thing, we must never forget the God factor in any circle of partnership. And on Fresh Dew, we remember the God factor in our circle of partnership. So really, the question is, can increase occur therefore without the God factor? And the answer is no. No matter how hard you work really, or how much you plant, or how much you water, we must remain conscious of the God factor. God is the one that brings the increase. Now, another question is, can God increase us without our playing our roles? Yes, he can, but he won't. Can God increase us without the circle of partnership? Yes, he can, because he's God, but he won't. Why do I say he won't? Because we're no longer a child of God. In the wilderness mode, in the mode where manna just drops and quail drops in our laps from heaven. No. You know, when the, when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan, the Bible says in Joshua 5.12 that the manna ceased. 5.12, I believe. The manna ended. That was it. Why did the manna cease? The manna that was dropping from heaven free of charge ended because when they crossed the Jordan, they plugged into Genesis 8.22. Seed time and harvest will never cease. 
And the Bible says, as they ate of the produce of their planting and their watering, and of course the God factor came in, God took away the manna. And there was no more free fall of provision from heaven. God can free fall provision, but he set up a cycle. And I like to put it this way, in the circle of partnership on Fresh Dew, we plug into the cycle. The circle plugs into the cycle. And the cycle is seed time and harvest. Where we plant, we come to the set, we teach the word of God, we shoot, and you water with your prayers, with your financial contributions, and we continue to push the gospel on fresh to you out to the ends of the earth. Now, how do I become a partner? It's very simple. Just log on to www.freshg.tv and follow the, the signs and log in and begin to, you know, be part of what God is doing in the circle of partnership. You can put your partnership in any currency. You can put in any frequency you want to, but it's just for us to hold hands together, knowing that in that circle, the God factor is the most important and we can't do it without the God factor. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I'm Pastor Nkechi Ede and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this episode and indeed every episode of Fresh Dew. Today on Fresh Dew we conclude our message series, Ingredients for Making the Impossible Possible. We've enjoyed that this week, Ingredients for Making the Impossible Possible. We took our story from the book of Luke chapter 1 from verses 26 to 38 and from 45 to 48. And that's the story of the angel appearing to the Virgin Mary, telling her to rejoice. She was highly favored and she'd been chosen to birth the Son of God. And that's just a summary. And we saw in that story, which I consider a perfect example of an impossible situation becoming possible. We saw ingredients that when you put them all together and probably some more, you can turn impossible situations in your life into possible ones. Because a virgin, the last time I checked, does not give birth to a child. That is considered naturally impossible. And she even had to ask, how can this thing be? I don't know a man. That's the way it's supposed to happen. A woman is supposed to know a man and have a child. How do you tell me that I am going to be a virgin, remain a virgin, and give birth to a child? And it wasn't a spiritual birth. It was a natural birth, and a baby came out of her because that was the word of the Lord in performance. But there were ingredients that made that impossible situation turn around to a possibility. And a virgin gave birth to a child. We looked at the first ingredient of favor, the next ingredient of faith, the third ingredient of the power of God. And the last ingredient today is the ingredient of praise. Hallelujah. The ingredient of praise. And if we, you know, take the story further, we'll see what Mary said from Luke 1, 39. It says, Now Mary arose in those days and went to the hill country with haste in this, to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things that were told her from the Lord. And indeed, there was a fulfillment. And Mary said, and she began to sing her song of praise. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones, hallelujah, and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry 
with good things. Such praise to our God. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to God. That was a, an awesome song of praise for Mary. I know the Bible says in Psalm 50, 23, whoever offers praise glorifies God and to him who orders his conduct or his conversation aright, I will show the salvation of the Lord. And that's the way you praise God, with your mouth, with your way of life, with your conversation, with your conduct, with the things you do, the things you say, your attitude, an attitude of praise and thanksgiving to our God all the time. And that is an ingredient that is often missed because many times you don't feel like praising God. A religious spirit will stop you from praising God. You know, a, 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 an ungrateful spirit will stop you from praising God. A self-conscious spirit will, cause you from, will stop you from praising God. A victim mentality will stop you from praising God. But praise is a critical ingredient in that pot of soup that will turn the impossible to possible. You've put the favor, you've put the faith, you've put the power, you've got to put in the praise. And then you will see the salvation of the Lord come into manifestation in your life. Glory be to God. Through the scriptures, when you see the gospel in the gospels, you see that when people had God's power, we talked about power as, a, as an ingredient, when people had God's power, you know, demonstrated in their lives, in most cases, you saw them burst out into praise. You saw them begin to praise God and give God glory. And there are certain things you will learn about praise. When we begin to praise God the way we should, we're going to praise God with a loud voice. We sing aloud of his mercy. Sing aloud. You don't praise God like a, you know, like a thief in the night. No! You lift up your voice and you praise God. And you say what God has done for you. You begin to invoke the praise of God all over the place. And in the house of God, and outside of the house of God, when you feel like it, and when you don't feel like it, you declare the goodness of God. That's what it means to magnify God. It means to make him big. Glory be to God. Look at the things that happen when you praise God. When you praise God, you are distinguished among men and among your equals. Verse 42 says, She spoke with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women. Elizabeth was speaking about Mary. And he says, look, blessed are you. Among Mary was just getting into her praise. And Mary was distinguished, set apart. And Elizabeth said, there's something special about you. You are blessed among women. Child of God, you want to be set apart. You want to be distinguished, not just among, you know, believers. Among believers, among your peers, among your equals. Learn to have an attitude of praise. Learn to always put the praise of God in your lips. Learn to begin to say what God has done for you. And as you praise God, waves and waves of the blessing will be poured out from heaven for you. And you know, you can call those waves what you want. You call them what you want and they become that to you. You begin to speak of the goodness of God. And if it's the waves of healing you need, begin to praise God that you are healed, whether you feel like it or not. And you begin to see those manifestations in your life. Begin to praise God that you are prosperous. Don't keep saying, I'm confused. I don't know what to do. Begin to praise God that you are led by God's spirit. Begin to praise God and declare those things he has said that he has done already in Christ Jesus for you. And you will be set apart, set apart, set apart from the crowd and distinguished. And there will be a distinction upon you. I prophesy to you that this distinction and this being set apart is who you are in the name of Jesus. As you open your mouth, and begin to learn to praise. Don't be that believer who is always complaining. Everybody has got some issues they're facing or the other. Don't be that believer who magnifies Satan. Don't be that believer who analyzes every single problem you're going through. And you're looking for sympathy. Nah, that's the next thing that happens when you praise God. It magnifies God. What, are, what does that mean? Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. What does it mean to magnify I mean, you've got a magnifying glass. You put something, you look, it's bigger. Make God big. Make him bigger than the situation. When you magnify God, you minimize the problem. When you magnify God, you minimize the problem. When you magnify God, you minimize the problem. When you magnify God, the problem disappears. Glory be to God. 
That's the way it works. It says, my soul magnifies the Lord. Talk about how big God is. Talk about how awesome he is. Talk about the power of his arm. Talk about resurrection power that is at work in you. And mind, like we learned last episode. Talk about the greatness and the goodness of God. Talk about the incomparable power of God. Talk about those things. And as you do that, imagine this. He gets bigger and bigger in your situation. It's not like you are actually physically making God bigger. God is who he is. He's big. But in your perspective, with respect to your problem, God becomes big. And that problem minimizes to the point where it disappears completely. That is what happens when you praise God. You make him big and you make the problem small. What else happens when you praise God? When you praise God, there shall be a performance by God and it is permanent. It's important to note that it is permanent. It's not a come today, you know, go back tomorrow stuff. It is permanent. Look at what he says. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. The Bible says, whatsoever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing shall be added to it. Nothing removed from it. And he does that many fear before him. And one way to ensure that it's permanent is with your praise. Some of us get, you know, a miracle or get a change in our lives. We wander off to solve the next problem. We don't give God thanks. We don't even go back sometimes to the vessels that God used and tell them, look at how God used you to bless me. We just grab what it is and move on to the next thing on our shopping list. No, one way to keep that performance permanent is to keep thanksgiving and praise on your lips all the time. Testify about the goodness of God. Make God big. Speak about the performance and whatever God does in your life, it shall be permanent. Nothing shall be added to it. Nothing will remove from it. He does it that men will fear and be in awe at just how great he is. You see, you praise God when you see what he has done, and that's the easy part. But you also praise God when you haven't seen it yet. You remember the story I told you, the example I gave of getting a title deed for property you haven't seen, and you may never yet see that property, but you're on the stage already testifying to the whole church. Look at the land documents I got. I now own land in such and such state. You haven't seen it yet. That's what happens when you praise God before you see the manifestation. That's what you do. Sometimes you praise him by faith. Sometimes you give thanks for what you haven't seen yet. You're trusting God for your children. The children haven't yet been manifested. Praise God. Call yourself mother so-and-so. If your child's name is going to be um, um, John, call yourself Mama John. And that's your new name. My name is Mama John. Because you know even though John hasn't shown up, you know he's real. You've got the title deed. So you praise him. And that is sometimes what makes it difficult for us to pour in that last ingredient of praise for the impossible to become possible. We want to wait to see it first. No, sometimes it's easy that way to praise when you actually have the manifestation, but sometimes you praise him by faith. Verse 51 says, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. That is the performance that he shows to us. Glory be to God. This performance is the power of God that is at work in our lives. And there is a performance going on in a lot of our bodies even right now. There are healings taking place. There are cysts melting. There are fevers departing in the name of Jesus Christ. Even as you lift your hands and begin to give him praise, there are ears that are opening even right now in the name of Jesus. There is a performance and a fulfillment of the word of God, a fulfillment of the power of God. As we pour in that final ingredient of praise, we have poured in favor and we've poured in faith and we've poured in the power of God and we're cooking that impossible situation and now we pour in our praise, whether we have seen it yet or we haven't seen it, there is a performance going on. I need to reach out by faith and one of the best ways to do it is to begin to thank God and begin to say, I receive, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I receive that change. And you speak to that part of your body. You speak to that situation. And say, I receive that turnaround. I give you praise. that The power of your arm has turned around this situation. The power of your arm has caused a performance, has shown its strength 
on my behalf and you reach out and you take it and you take what has already been obtained from you child of God hallelujah and guess what happens with this performance when you praise this performance by God leads to exaltation it leads to promotion it says in verse 52 he has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree hallelujah so where do you see yourself now you seem to see yourself in a place of low degree you seem to see yourself in a lowly place well listen to me child of God whosoever offers praise glorifies me begin to glorify him begin to give him praise begin to say like we say in our church ha 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 hallelujah ha 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 give a laugh at that situation that seems to want to challenge who you are in Christ open your mouth and give God praise open your mouth and astound the enemy because the last thing he expects to see you do is praise God but when you open your mouth you see I give you praise I magnify you I stretch forth my hands to the heavens and I tell everyone there is no God like you. I tell everyone that you're a good God. You're a mighty God. You're the great king. You sit on the circles of the earth. Who is like you, O God? Look at the thunder of your power. Look at how great you are and begin to extol the greatness of God and make him big. Magnify him. Talk about what he has already done in your life, whether you have seen it or not. And there will be a performance and that performance, child of God, will bring about, it will bring about an exaltation, it will bring about a promotion, it will bring about a lifting. And when others are complaining and saying there is a casting down in your praise, you will declare, no, there is a lifting up. And I'm being lifted up by the hands of my own Ebenezer, by the hands of my helper, by the hands of the one whom I depend on, by the hands of the one, by the arm of the one, on whom I depend and in whom I have put my trust and in the congregation of the righteous I will lift my vo voice among the saints I will lift my voice and I will give praise to Almighty God I will give praise to Jehovah I will give praise to El Shaddai I will give praise to Adonai I will give praise to the I am that I am I will give praise to the author and finisher. I will give praise to Alpha and Omega. I will look the mountain in the face and I will say, there is a God that is bigger than you and that God is in me. This is Christ in me, the hope of glory. I am not moved by what I see. I am moved by the word of God alone. And where the word of God is impossible, situations melt. For dunamis cannot stand and watch Adunatos. When dunamis shows up, Adunatos melts away. And I invoke dunamis. I celebrate dunamis. I magnify the God of dunamis by saying just how great and how awesome he is and how big he is. And as I do that, every single situation crumbles and crawls away like a little cockroach out of my environment. And my environment is filled with the atmosphere of praise and the goodness of God manifest all around me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. Thank you, Lord. There is no God like you. We give you all of the glory. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the undiluted word. Thank you for opportunities you send our way. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for guiding us. We praise you for we are never lost without you. We can never lose our way without you. Thank you for giving us a purpose in life, even from the foundation of the world. Thank you for loving us in a way that nobody can love us. Thank you for providing for us, even in the wilderness and in the desert. Thank you for causing rain to pour down on us. Thank you for healing our bodies completely and wholesomely. Thank you for giving us peace that passes all understanding. Thank you for the explosion of the blessing. We praise you our Father, for there is no God like you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Som Tochuku Som Tochuku Maka Akachuku Meriwo 
so mto chuku maka oku chuku bwebe ngba kwasi oku so mto chuku maka amara chuku jobim so mto chuku maka ebube chuku di ebenine so mto chuku so mto chuku so mto chuku okwesiri kaineto chuku get your copy of dancing with your spirit the book by pastor nkechi ene Romans 10:17 says, "So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God." You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkechi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.